The idea is to create a simple and functional form, which has an in-place loading state and also provide the submission response. For that, start by creating a form element, with id as my form. Inside which create an input element of type email, class as input, and also add the other attributes as shown. Below that add a label element as shown. Finally add a button element with a simple class name, we will add the content of the button later. This is the entire HTML structure, now we will style it. Start by styling the form element, by setting its width and height to fit content, and position to relative. Next style the input element, by setting its width and height as shown, and applying a background color. Then apply a solid black border of 0.4mm, remove its outline, and apply a border radius of 1mm. Next apply padding of 10 pixels to the left and right, and make sure to apply box sizing to border box to avoid overflow created by padding. Then set its font properties as shown. Next apply a simple box shadow when the input is focused. You can make the effect smoother by applying a transition to the input element. Next style the label element by setting its position to absolute at top 7 pixels and left 10 pixels. Then set its font properties. The label should be visible only when the input is focused. For that initially set the label at top 15 pixels, hide it by setting the opacity to 0 and visibility to hidden. When the input is focused, target the label element and make it visible by setting it at top 7 pixels, opacity to 1 and visibility to visible. Add a transition to the label element to make the effect smoother. We can see that the input text and the label elements are too close to each other. For that when the input is focused, add a padding to the top as shown. Now we can see that the label is not visible after entering the text. For that, when the placeholder of the input is not shown, target the label element and make it visible. There is no space between the input and label when the text has been entered, so apply padding top when the placeholder is not shown. Also, the placeholder is visible even after the input is focused. Fix it by targeting the placeholder when the input is focused and set its opacity to zero. Next style the button element by setting its position to absolute at top 50% and right 4 pixels and set its width and height as shown. Then translate it by minus 50% in Y axis to align the button vertically center. Next set its outline to none, apply a solid black border of 0.4 mm and border radius to 1 mm. Finally set its cursor to pointer. We can see that the input text is flowing behind the button, so fix it by setting padding right for the input element. Now the text is not overlapping. Next add a pseudo element for the content of the button, set a Google icon as shown. Next set its position to absolute at the top left corner and set its width and height to 100%. Next set its background color, icon color and font size. Then align the icon to the center using display flex. Next set display to none for the button element and hide it by default. When the input is valid then target the button element and make it visible. Not just the basic validation, we can also create custom patterns for validation as shown. Now we can see a proper email validation is being applied. Next we will create a loading state for this form. For this we will set a class called load for the form element. When the form is in the loading state, change the background color of the input element. Also change the icon of the button. Change the icon color using the background clip and text fill color properties as shown. Next add an animation called rotate which runs infinitely. Create the animation by rotating the icon from 0 degrees to minus 360 degrees which will create the loading effect. Next we will create the submitted status message. For that change the form's class name from load to submit. Next create a pseudo element for the submit class, set its position to absolute at the top left corner and set its content as the status message. Next set its font properties and apply a background color. Then set its width and height to 100% and align its content to center using display flex. Next apply a forward animation called slide of duration 0.25 seconds. 
Create the animation, where the element grows from width 0 to 100%. We can see that the text is wrapping and creating overflow while animating. Fix it by setting overflow to hidden, and white space to no wrap for the pseudo element. Finally hide the label element when the form is in the submit state. Now that we have the loading state and submit status, we will make that appear when the form is submitted. For that add a submit function when the button is clicked and pass the button as the parameter to it. Inside a script tag, create the function and pass the button as the parameter. Inside which create a form variable targeting the form element. Next disable the button, to avoid the multiple button clicks. Remove the submit class from the form element which we have added previously. Then add the load class to form. We can see the loading state when the button is clicked. You can add Ajax or any other form submission function here. I am adding a set timeout for representation. Inside which change the class name from load to submit for the form element. We can see how the form changes from loading to submit status. But the button is overlapping with the submit status. Fix it by setting Z index to the submit pseudo class. Then add another set timeout function to remove the submit class from the form after 1.5 seconds. Below mention form.submit, which will reset the form to original state. And you have your simple form ready. If you find this tutorial valuable then subscribe to the channel.